let's jump right into today's video and that is making over this tired old master bedroom closet. Last year, I took on a fun one week makeover of our master bedroom. I made over a space using only what I had on hand. But at that time, I completely turned a blind eye to our closet because I just knew that it would take a lot more time and love than I was able to give with what I had. So here is our closet. The goal is to use this space just for our daily clothing and move any suits, dresses, jackets to our guest bedroom closet. So the layout just doesn't work very well for us, like the way that the clothing rod intersects with the shelving, and then also we could use a lot more shelving for folded clothing. So yeah, time for a refresh in here. Day one, step one, let's get started first by just emptying out this closet and taking all this clothing and adding it to the giant pile of clothing that I have going in the guest bedroom right now. Next, we started the very small demo aspect of this job and just removed the shelving as well as took out all of the shoe molding in the closet. And we decided to leave the baseboards and accept that the built-ins would be about a quarter inch off the wall. And we just did this so that if we ever decided to remove the built-ins, we would still have the original baseboard in place. So our closet opening here is three feet by six feet. I got started by putting this three foot by six foot space into SketchUp to start planning. I considered a lot of options. First, I checked out the simple Rubbermaid closet systems and it seemed like they were best suited to a straight wall closet and I really wanted to take advantage of the shorter end of our closet with something L shaped. I considered building something totally custom, likely out of plywood, just to make the very most of the space. We needed a lot of shelving and just a little bit of hanging space ideally. So I modeled out what would be our perfect space and then I even planned out each cut on four by eight sheets of plywood just to figure out how much material we would need. This was the perfect layout, but it also seemed like a lot of work. So I wanted to research to see if there were any like pre-made flat pack type shelving systems that would be a close fit. I initially didn't even consider IKEA pack systems because I was only familiar with their 58 centimeter depth which would just be too big for our space. However, I learned that they had more narrow frames, so I thought that this could maybe be the perfect fit. So using the IKEA PAX planner, I put in our closet dimension and then started to play around with some of their units. Sure enough, two of the narrow units for folded items paired with one of their more deep units at the end for hanging clothing was going to be the perfect fit. And there was just four unused inches in one direction, which I could totally live with. I triple checked all of these dimensions many times and then ordered everything that I needed. This closet is a project that I am so happy to get started on. After living in and working on our house for the past year, I've definitely realized that projects that I like to prioritize over anything structural, of course, are those that impact our daily life the most. So I personally find that clothing organization, whether in a closet or not, is a big one because we use it on a daily basis when getting ready. Without a good system in place, it can definitely just add like an unnecessary element of annoyance to your morning, not knowing where the certain things are that you're looking for. So even if you aren't working with a large space, thoughtfully designing it based on knowing what you want out of the space can add a lot of function and just make your daily tasks a little easier. All three units are in, they're a pretty much perfect fit, which we knew, that's why I chose Ikea. Um, but it's always hard to know if it's actually going to be a perfect fit in real life. Um, and it's a good fit, but it's not square. So we need to get some shims. Um, but now that everything's in place, I can like start to think about areas like this gap and where there's two seams. With that, the next step was figuring out what to use to make these closets look more built in. This sketch shows where I was planning to add some trim to give it that look. I have used IKEA PAX closets in more modern spaces without doing anything to make them look built in, but in our older home, I definitely just wanted to give this a more traditional look. 
I measured everywhere that there was a seam between two cabinets or where there was a gap between the cabinet and the wall. I also measured the length at the base and the top of the cabinets because I wanted to add baseboard and crown. But the goal is just to cover any areas that would indicate that this was a flat packed system. We really just want to give it more weight. So with my dimensions, I headed down to the computer to check out trim options. Okay, so I find that searching for trim online can be confusing because a lot of different types of trim can achieve a similar look in the case of trimming out a piece of furniture. Things like fiberboard, casing, door jam, baseboard, etc. they all could possibly work. So just to see everything, I searched Alexandria Molding on the Home Depot website because I know that they make just about all of the trim products there. Yes, I went through all 21 pages and saved the items that had the width dimension that I needed for the various areas I was trying to cover. In the end, I narrowed it all down to my selections. I decided to keep the overall look pretty simple with flat trim pieces, but they do have more decorative pieces if that's your style too. I've listed out what I used in the video description below. So when you're making your closet look like a built-in, you are going to need to paint it all in the end because the trim is going to be a different color than the closet itself. And you'll also want to conceal like all the nails and caulking that you use to make it look really seamless. So while I was waiting for my trim order for curbside pickup, I decided to pick a paint color. I used a Ferro and Ball color because they're the only brand that I have a fan deck for and I personally have not had any success choosing paint colors online. Good morning, I have got all the supplies finally that I need to finish this off today. So I'm in my work clothes and really hoping that we can shim, spackle, trim, prime and paint. Um, so that's the goal for the day. Right now I'm just putting shelves in each of these two cupboards that are going beside each other because the main goal with leveling it and shimming it is so that we have a consistent kind of line between the shelves on the two cabinets because currently um, one of the cabinets is sitting about half an inch lower than the other. So we're just going to have to elevate one of them a little bit using shims and screw it into the wall to make sure that it's really secure. With the units all leveled and securely fastened to the wall, you can start to add the trim work. I started with the gap pieces because I thought that they would be the most difficult. So to cut these pieces, I measured the distance between the cabinet and the wall at various points down the wall, and then I marked those measurements onto a piece of fiberboard, which I then cut with a jigsaw. Holy moly, I'm pretty impressed with this job. We will be doing a piece of trim. Um, where's my finger? All the way down there, like where the two pieces connect, and then I'll use caulking on that far seam there but i'm pretty happy with the fit next up these smaller pieces of trim covered any seams and they just needed to be cut to the proper length these went on with just a nail gun we did a simple flat fiberboard baseboard which we then finished off with some shoe mold around the base of it just so that it tied in with the shoe mold that was originally in this closet and also is throughout the rest of our house. It just, again, adds to that whole look of making it look like a built-in. So now that the unit is all trimmed, it is time to work on the details. I decided to fill all the holes of the unit except for the ones that I wanted to use for placing shelves, which you can see I've just added a tick of a marker stem there. This definitely takes away the flexibility that is one of the great things about the PAX units, but I felt really confident with the shelf location, so I was personally okay to do this. If you would rather not cover the holes permanently, IKEA does sell plastic hole fillers and it definitely makes them a lot less visually noticeable. To do this, I just used regular dry deck spackling and I sanded the excess when it was dry. Good afternoon, I'm back here. Sometimes I feel funny with this video because um, everything's happening in a three foot by six foot space. Uh, so it's a little, maybe it's a little claustrophobic. Um, anyway, I have spackled all of the holes and I'm now going to caulk all of the seams. I am back in the closet 
And today I am caulking the seams. So I've done this cabinet and you can see that like the, the seams are all nice and closed off now compared to that is what they usually look like, so. Okay, so we do not have any electricity in the closet and it's not something that I really think we're going to add anytime too soon. So I found these motion sensor battery activated lights and they just kind of use a 3M strip to stick onto your cupboard. So I'm going to use these. I think it'll be nice just for like early mornings when we're getting ready and it's still kind of dark out. Um, however, I'm not a huge fan of the white, so I'm just going to tape off the light and give them a quick spray paint of a gold color. I think that it'll just kind of blend in a little bit more and not stand out as much as a bright white would. While I was at it, I spray painted the rest of the hardware for the closet too, just for cohesion. So here I am doing the rods and I even did the little clips that hold the shelves in place. So finally, it was time to paint. When painting a shiny coated surface like these IKEA cabinets, prep is super, super important. So I did a light sanding on everything and used a high adhesion primer that specifically mentioned that it works well on glossy surfaces. So for the final paint coat, I decided on a semi-gloss because I like that it gives a bit more of like a high-end, durable looking finish. And I also decided to paint the entire space, so the units, the walls, the ceiling, everything the same color. In a smaller area like this, I just think it gives it a nice elegant feel. I let the paint dry for a couple of days and then added in the shelves. These are IKEA pack shelves and I painted them as well. I reused our old clothing rod and cut it down to size with new brackets. Moment of truth. It's the time I've been oddly excited for since we started this closet and that is putting on the lights. So I showed these a little bit before, now they're all spray painted. So. I have six of them. I'm going to go figure out the best location for them in the closet. Okay, do you remember on, I think Saturday night, I posted about maybe putting a little carpet in the closet. Well, I ordered it on Sunday morning and it just arrived from Turkey. And here we have the completed closet. This new space has given us a lot more usable area and stepping in just feels so different than it did before. I know that it's just a closet and it even sounds funny to say, but it just has such a nice warm feel in here now. And it's definitely made the daily task of taking out and putting away clothing a lot more enjoyable. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.